This video is about the external RAM chip on this STM32F7 discovery kit. To motivate this discussion, here's a demo of my audio effects processor running on this F769 discovery kit. The signal from the guitar is sampled and processed entirely on the STM32 at 48 kHz with a 10 millisecond latency. I'm highlighting the delay effect, which sounds cool but uses too much internal RAM. I want the delay buffer to be moved to the external RAM chip without too much coding effort and with acceptable performance. This video will mostly consist of two parts. The demo project I will port over to CMake so I can look at how it's built and how it can integrate to an existing project. The one thing we'll see about the example project is it doesn't help you gauge how fast reading and writing is or even to see the size of the memory. It says 128 megabit, but what does that really mean? Is it really 16 megabytes of true random access memory? Yes, you can read and write 16 megabytes, random access, and regarding speed, it took between half a second and one second to read, write, and check the entire memory. What I'm doing here is more like a sanity check than an analysis, but that's sufficient to solve my problem. And then I'll actually use the SD-RAM by allocating a large buffer of audio samples in SD-RAM. And along the way I will explain some bits of background, but as you can tell already I'm not an expert as I literally learned all of this today. So what is this thing? What is going on? Here's the schematic. We're in the user manual of the F769 discovery kit. You can see 32 data lines, 12 address lines, two bank select lines, various control lines, four mask lines. 128 megabits is 16 megabytes, which nominally is 24 bits of address space. How do you use 12 address lines and two bank select lines to cover 24 bits of address space? Well, you can't, so the access is split up into a column select and a row select. The mask bits are for masking the data in reads and writes, and I want all 32 bits, so I don't care about the mask bits. And then we just have the clock and the control signals, so even though I don't know the details of this chip, I can see there's not too much going on here. There are no other components, and all the lines are directly connected to the microcontroller. Now, what is a FMC, and how does it control this thing? I'm going to summarize this ST presentation on the FMC. We see here the FMC is a peripheral that can control lots of different memory interfaces, including SDRAM. The purpose of the FMC is to map the external memory into the CPU address space. The address space is divided up into these banks. For SDRAM, we will be starting at address C1000. I think it's safe to infer from this diagram that all SDRAM chips have the same interface and are interchangeable. Interesting. The SDRAM clock can run at one half or one third the system clock speed. And here we see stuff that I don't care about and hopefully I don't need to. Now let's look at the example project. I'm going to build the example project and make note of its components. Then I will load it onto the target and exercise it. The example project I'm looking at is this. Cube F7 Firmware Projects 769 Discovery Examples FMC. It's a very simple project, just main interrupt handlers, HAL MSP. I'll copy it into my project directory and then grab all the relevant stuff out of it source includes linker script startup code then delete the rest now i'm going to populate this cmake lists file until it builds i'll start with compiling just main.c i'll add the toolchain paths and the add executable command and then run the first build it says i need to include the hal files okay now i need the cm sys definition of the device and now I get lots of errors. Let's look at the first one. It says I need to define the STM32F7 device. This is a compiler flag. Now I need to supply the CMSYS Cortex-M7 headers. Now it needs the header for the discovery kit, which is in the BSP. 
So this error is really annoying. I'm just going to add the flag that removes that option. And now I'm getting undefined references to the HAL symbols. But first let me build all of the project source files to make sure I get all those symbols to the linker before I start linking in stuff from outside the project. Okay, now I'm going to start adding the sources for these undefined HAL symbols. I'm going to supply the path to the HAL, which is outside of this project. I'll add the GPIO. I'll add the SDRAM HAL. I'll add the lower level FMC. The HAL code supports DMA, so we're going to add in the DMA. The HAL tick is in the top level HAL file. The NVIC is in the HAL Cortex file. And then I'll add the COT config and power extension. And we need the BSP LED routines. Going to add the path to the BSP. The LEDs are defined in this discovery.c file, which also contains references to I squared C. So we're going to add in this pointless dependency to make the compiler happy. Okay, getting close. We just need to supply these symbols that are in the linker script and the linker flags to use a different uh, libc. So we have the linker script We're using the new lib nano and it's always good to get the linker map. Gotta add those flags at the bottom here. So we get a successful build. Let's just do a sanity check here. Sensible sizes, sensible file type. Cool, now that it's built, we can just go straight to loading this on the target. Okay, really quick, I'll describe what this program does. So we're going to initialize, then we're going to fill up a buffer with some values. Going to write that buffer to the SDRAM memory, read it back into a buffer, check that the values are the same. If the check passes, we're going to LED solid on, otherwise the LED will blink. Okay, I'm going to flash the target and execute this program. First what I'm going to do is SCP the binary over to my beagle bone, which you see at the bottom of the camera. The beagle bone runs open OCD and is connected to the discovery kit by USB. And the beagle bone is now going to start the GDB client and connect to the GDB server. Notice we're debugging remote on port 3333. So I can use GDB to load the target with the ELF file in the temp directory. Okay, the target has been flashed, reset, and halted. Notice the LEDs on the left of the board are off. Now I can start the program with the continue command. And we see the green LED on the left side of the board is on. While that's fine that the program just executed, there's some things that I need before I can actually use this. One, I need to be able to read and write the entire memory. Two, I need some idea of how fast it is. And three, I need to actually allocate something in the SDRAM, not just write to a raw pointer. Okay, let's look into this program. So we have a buffer of buffer size number of words. And then we're going to fill up this buffer, passing in the buffer, buffer size, and this value. And this function is self-explanatory despite the incorrect spelling and the incorrect name for this initial starting value. And to write this data to the memory, we have the memory starting address plus this address, which is converted into a byte address by multiplying the word index by 4 to get the byte address. So basically what I want to do is put all of this into a loop for a bunch of buffers so I can fill up the entire memory. So I wrap this in this loop, going from 0 to the number of buffers to write, and using this new index i, we're going to compute a new address to write to. So I'll remove this write read address, and then add this new buffer offset, which is the buffer index i times the buffer size in words times 4 the word size. And then I will also add this to the reading, 
The number of buffers to write is the size of the entire memory in bytes divided by the buffer size in bytes. Okay, so that built here. Now let's go ahead and try it again. So again, I'm going to SCP the binary over to the beagle bone. Then here on the beagle bone, I can do load. Okay, it's loaded. Continue. Start the program. Oh, the light doesn't go on. Let's see what happened. Hard fault handler. Oh, that's not good. So all I did was change the addresses that were being written to. Take a look at the memory contents and see if anything worked at all. So with GDB, I can examine the memory contents like this. I know the starting address is C1000. Okay, we get that value. Look at some more words here. Okay, we get the values. Now this should have gone all the way up to 1 million. How about halfway? Zero 08. Just before halfway, 7. Huh. So it goes all the way up to the end of the 7s stops at 8, exactly halfway. That's kind of fishy. So this is main.h. When I first was looking through this, this part here immediately caught my eye as being fishy. Why are there three choices here, two of which being commented out, and why is the one not commented the 16-bit width? The SD RAM is clearly a 32-bit data bus. So what if I just uh, change that to the 32-bit width and see what happens. I'll build it again, copy it over, reload, and now I'll restart the program, continue. Huh, light goes on. Let's examine the memory. Oh, interesting, 8,000, or, yeah, half a million. It's there, let's keep going in. Wow, let's try a million, or, just uh, just before a million. Wow, it's there. Okay, so it looks like that was the problem, and everything seems to be filled up with memory all the way up to C million hex. And this is just par for the course with the ST libraries and examples. They're just god-awful. It's some of the worst reference I've ever seen. Actually, no, and, and I think it's just par for the course in general. All these semiconductor companies have a really good way of writing just absolutely useless reference code. So now that I've got that waste of time out of the way, now I can get to the next part, which is I want to replace this nonsense with something that is actually usable in an application. Basically, I'm going to replace this with a array that is allocated in the SD RAM. To do this I'm going to use a linker section. But basically what it's going to look like we'll have an external RAM buffer that spans the entire memory. I'm going to write words to it. Buffer index times buffer size number of words plus the word index. And then do the same thing on the reading side. Now I'm going to define this external RAM buffer as follows. So here I'm going to have an array of words and the size will be how many words? So I have 8 megabytes, so that's a mega times 8. And then I want to say that this is going to be in the external RAM, so I have to tell the compiler to do that. And I'm using GCC, so I have a attribute for that. And that looks like this. Section, external RAM section. Okay, so now I have to define the external RAM section in the linker script. So the linker script is here. So I need to do two things to find the memory area. So we just start with uh, flash and RAM. So also going to have external RAM. And it's going to start at 3000 at a length of 8 megs. And then we want to say that that external RAM section should be in the external RAM memory. Let's give that a try. 
Okay, it overflowed. I guess, uh, oh. I, this number was bytes, but this is a buffer of words, so divide that by four, get two million words. Let's try that. Okay, good. Now let's uh, load that up. And again, I can SCP that over. Oh, that's kind of odd. Took longer to copy that over. Load. Okay, loading. Interesting. Why is it taking a second to... Why is it loading stuff there? This is just... This is not initialized memory. I don't need it to be spending 10 seconds to load that. And it seems to be choking on this load. I guess um, that's because the CPU did not initialize that RAM, and so the memory isn't mapped. I uh, will have to fix this problem now. But to fix it is super easy. I will just add this no load in the linker script, which tells it not to load. I was expecting it to link again, but didn't get the output. So I'll do a clean build to force it to link. Uh, SCP again. Now load again. Okay, that's better. Okay, loading that. Alright, it's there. And run. Okay, the light went on. Very good. Just uh, double check the memory again. Okay, print out C1000. Um, Zero eight. Okay, it's there. C F more Fs. Okay, great. So that's basically all I need to now get started in using the SD RAM in my application. Lastly, I just want to do one more thing, which is do a ballpark speed check of the RAM reading and writing. So here I'm gonna reset and take a mental note of how long it takes for that LED to go on. And you can see it takes about two seconds. It seems like a long time. It would seem like I could get faster than that because the RAM clock is going at 100 megahertz and even if the reading had to be broken up into a row select and column select for each operation that should double the time plus some overhead with doing the buffer indexing but i'm going to leave it there not going to look into it further if anybody knows more details about this please feel free to share